Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com. This is the chart. It's the new moon, 2nd of January 2022, and it's at 1833. This is set for London in the UK. It's a difficult chart, and yet there is potential. The new moon for the first new moon of the year, of course, sets in motion our wishes, our hopes, our intentions, all of those things that we would like to occur in our lives. We have got this very, very tricky, difficult, frustrating <laughs> square from there's Uranus in Taurus over here. That little red line is a square. It's to Saturn. Now, it's past exactitude but it's still there and if you've been having problems i certainly have been having problems over the last few days partly it's to do with this you know saturn is all about restrictions fear it's di a difficult energy and it's very powerful in the sign of aquarius far more so than uranus in taurus doesn't really uranus doesn't really like taurus at all so we have this predominance of Saturn and fear, that fear of being around people, meeting people, Aquarius, is networking, communities, is testing all of us at this time. We also have got now, just to mention it, it's not huge at the moment, but the nodes have changed signs. So the North Node is now in Taurus, the South Node is now in Scorpio and that will be more relevant when we come up to the eclipses later in the year. What we do have here at this new moon, Mercury. Mercury just changed sign into Aquarius. It's a sign it, it likes. Mercury is all about logic. Aquarius is an air sign. So this is this is boding well. However, <laughs> however, cue music for however music, it's danger zone because Mercury will go retrograde on the 15th of January. So it's spending an awfully long time in Aquarius. So wherever that is in your chart, you know, it's an air sign. Mercury likes that. So it is to do with you becoming more logical because that's the nature of Mercury. It's also the trickster. Now Pluto, it's interesting this chart is set after the sun has set. There's Pluto, 25 degrees of Capricorn. It seems to be staying in Capricorn forever. It's not. It will move in a couple of years' time, in 2024. But here's Venus. So the story is very much at the moment about Venus. Sun and Moon, Venus, Pluto. That's a stellium of planets in Capricorn. And Venus is retrograde now. So what's going to happen, I'm going to move forward six days a moment. Here you are. So on Saturday the 8th, not the exact time, but you can see here's Pluto and Venus and Venus is next to the Sun. So Venus is now becoming invisible, being retrograde. It will reappear as a morning star. So you do have to get up quite early to see Venus as a morning star. But that is a very big shift. I'm giving a masterclass on the 9th of January at 4 p.m. And at that time, in that masterclass, I will be looking very strongly at Venus and what is known as the shamanic cycle of Venus and the story of Inanna, goddess of heaven who descends and becomes the, the morning star is descending into the underworld and it's about surrender going backwards again we now of course have jupiter in pisces really important and here it is jupiter up here in pisces and there will be an amazing once in a lifetime conjunction, a joining of Neptune and Jupiter. It's on eight in April, April the 12th. It has not happened in our lifetime. So that's why it really is rare and extraordinary. 
And my hope is for a new vision, spirituality, joining. Pisces is very much the sign to do with oneness. It's also highly creative energy. And Jupiter brings vision. And it brings promise of hope and optimism and grace alongside Neptune. That's something really to put in your diary as a very, very special day this year. We have Mars at the moment. I mustn't forget Mars. It's in Scorpio. Here it is, Mars. And what's it doing? Well, it's having this problem with Neptune. Mars is all about action and strength and drive and it's very happy in the sign of Scorpio but it's weakened by that connection to Neptune because Neptune is the god of the sea, the ocean, the invisible and it absolutely does weaken. However, both are in the signs that they're very happy in and we can also see that Mars has actually been in a good very powerful healing connection to Chiron. Chiron is now going forward. So if you are around the age of 50, you will be having a Chiron return. It's a very good time of life. I remember it really well. I really look forward to it because Chiron, the healer, is where we're wounded. But after 50, it's the potential then to become the real true healer because we understand the nature of the wound. And anything else to mention? Venus disappearing. So if you're connected strongly to Venus, I certainly am. If you have you know, the sun in one of Venus's signs or, or any major planet, they are of course Taurus and Libra. Venus is also exalted in Pisces. But certainly with Pluto there, it's the goddess going into the underworld. You only have to watch the news, God forbid, there's an awful lot of very negative news at the moment, but certainly the the trial of Ghislaine Maxwell is, that's exactly the story, Venus Pluto. So it's important to recognise the potency and joining of Venus as the goddess with Pluto, which reminds me of the story very much of Persephone. Persephone was a young girl and she was abducted by Pluto who fell in love with her according to one story and what happened was she became the Queen of Souls. So I'd like to leave you with that message to recognize where Venus is in your chart right now alongside Pluto. There's a huge ability to translate that and potential, a huge potential to rise like the phoenix above adversity. Thank you for watching. I have had a lot of problems recently. I know this might be true of you also. And Healing Stars, if you sign up for my newsletter, join me on my masterclass, pam at healingstars.com.